Hello, <laughs> it is the top of the hour, it is 11 o'clock. We are here with the lovely team. This is a huge team of people. Um, Tom Hick and I are here from Makey Makey Wave, Tom. And we wanted to, um, to bring on this entire group of people because we have seen people create assistive technology and we have seen projects like where where people do amazing things and this one is not only super amazing it has so many teachers involved that we just really wanted to share um how you all put this together and how you did this so uh we won't do like huge bios because we want to talk about the project and your students but but we'll just go left to right and so so i'm colleen and i'm the uh i like to call myself the instigator of fun I, did, I tinker with my job title on a daily basis, uh, but I basically manage all our online content and um, create projects. And so it's really fun to interview people like everyone here. Uh, and then Tom, I'm gonna just pass it off. We'll do it popcorn style and then Tom can pick a person. So Tom. Hey. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm Tom Heck and I live in Asheville, North Carolina and where it's spring is fully here. And uh, what I do at Makey Makey is I, I get to work with Colleen and uh, together we're sort of the education uh, evangelist, if you will. Uh, and I tend to travel and lead workshops and, uh, and then also Colleen and I work together on webinars and uh, working on content too. So uh, I get to do some of that occasionally and uh, meet amazing teachers like we have here today. So uh, I'm gonna, um, maybe I'll, I'll drop it off over in Zach's lap. Zach, you're next. <laughs> okay, uh, so I teach math at Turner Ashby High School. This is my second year. Um, and Tom, I don't know if you heard earlier, I also graduated from tech, so go Hokies. Yeah, this, <laughs> can this get better? I don't know that this whole story is just getting better. Uh, I'll bounce off to Laura. Hi, I'm Laura. I, this is my 40th year of teaching. I wow. teach students with intellectual disabilities at Turner Ashby High School. Um, and my daughter is a Virginia Tech graduate also. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> and I'll send it off to Jennifer. Hi, my name is Jennifer and um, I taught English language learners before becoming an instructional technology resource teacher. And this is my fourth year in this position. And one of my passions is just working with people who are on the outskirts and bringing them into the circle. And so nice. accessibility is one of my things that I, that I really like to do. Great, Katie. Hi, and I will piggyback that Jennifer is the best when it comes to helping us with assistive technology and finding the right means for everybody. Um, my name is Katie. I um, used to be a teacher here at Turner Ashby High School. I taught uh, world history and some US history, but now I'm an instructional technology resource teacher. Jennifer and I joined, um, we're in the same cohort, so four years in. Mm -hmm. Um, and I enjoy helping teachers find best fit technology for their classroom. And I've really gotten into putting together these kind of unit project plans, um, inquiry learning and stuff like that. Awesome. And I know that we've got uh, a slide deck that you guys have prepared. <clears throat> I'm wondering if you can, uh, before we start in the slide deck, can you just briefly tell us what we're about to see? What is it that you're about to, what's the story you're about to tell us? Yeah, so um, this is um, some slides that we put together to tell the story of um, our cash register project kind of from its inception um, all the way until its completion. It was first being used in um, a cafe. Um, what we've done is we, we're going to show you the steps of the process, but my hope is, um, is that we're all going to be able to tell you more about the feel good moments and those moments of inspiration and the things that really made this project different from anything I think any of us have ever done. Mm -hmm. Even from the early beginning stages, we were aware that this was a really magical project. And um, to give a little backstory about where we're headed so you understand the story, um, we have a group of special ed students um, who Laura's going to talk about here in a little bit that run a cafe and they needed a cash register and we use Makey Makey as a solution. 
So that's what we're here to talk about today. And I think Laura can get us started um, on the next slide with kind of where this oh, all began. I'm just going to, I was just going to say, we saw this project on social and you were so humbly posting just about like, here's the winning cash register. <laughs> and that's when um, I like sent you guys a, a note like, oh, I need to know more about this. And the more and more Tom and I found out about it, we were actually writing a blog post uh, on these teachers. And the more and more Tom and I found out, we just thought you're so passionate and you're so awesome. We really wanted to share how you got through all of this because the whole story is really interesting. Uh, but the, the idea of the cash register also really got to me, which is, I mean, that's why we call it cashing in on design thinking. But, uh, and I know you guys originally had it called cashing in on each other. So I still think uh, I, I changed your title and maybe I shouldn't have done that. But um, <laughs> I, think, uh, I made a calculator one day, like I made a calculator with Makey Makey and it was really, really hard. So it was cool to see that you, I know that that's what Zach's students had to have made a calculator for this to work, but it just, this whole concept is really, really cool. So I'm going to move it to the next slide and you can, let's see, there we go. It started with this simple question. Uh, well, our students, we work with students with intellectual disabilities and within the intellectual disabilities, there's a, a wide variety of, of abilities. Um, so we opened the cafe four years ago with the with the intent to teach our kids vocational skills where they could use communication, uh, problem solving, soft skills, um, and money skills to help them get better acclimated to getting a job in the real world. Our goal is for our students to be competitively employed in the community. And everything was working great. And the one stumbling block was that no matter how many times we worked on money, and we did it every single day, we could not get our kids to be able to add up the, the purchases, decide how to make the change. We were using a calculator and it was just so slow. And we kept thinking, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. Maybe we can find something on the iPad. And for two years, Barbara and I said, there's got to be a better way. And finally, Barbara said, let's email Katie. So she emailed Katie with, what can you do to help us? Never expecting what we have now. Um, and that's how the whole thing got started. So uh, it was just out of a need to help our students be more independent. And I guess that's a definition of what an ITRT is. Um, a lot of people aren't quite sure what an instructional technology resource teacher is. And that's, that's what we're here for. We're a resource, we're someone you can contact when you have a question just like this. And to be fair, my response was, that's a great question. I don't know, I will get back to you. <laughs> awesome. I think that brings us to the slide we're at now because um, it was about two years ago at this time maybe a little after this time, it might have been April or May, when I got a email about a Makey Makey workshop that was about 45 minutes to an hour away. And I put it out to the group like, hey, does anybody want to do this? I know it's the week after school gets out, but does anybody want to go? And so another one of our ITRTs, Bethany, she's like, yeah, I'd like to go. So we went up to this workshop together and we're up there we learned so much and it was so well done and we were just amazed we're like on the trip on the trip home we're like we have to bring this to our people and we need to do the same thing that they did because they had um a technology consortium and it's the one con technology consortium that we're a part of that paid for each participant to receive a makey makey and we're like we need to do this for our people and for more people in our consortium. And so we actually, at one point, um, Bethany is really professional and doesn't want to like step on anybody's feet or like do something that might be, might be wrong. So we contacted Tom and actually had a conference call with Tom to make sure that we could change the presentation to meet the needs of our teachers in this area. And Tom, you were just great. And you were like, yes, do whatever you need to. So we added a few things to our presentation, but um, that's what got us started was attending that. And I think it's so, so ironic that, cause Katie had asked me like, hey, do you know anything like an app or something that could 
be a cash register. And I just remember going, no, I don't know anything off the top of my head. And then I didn't think about it again until she was in the workshop. And we'll get to that part later. And but, I, yeah. I wanted to shout out to Bethany because she is whoop, here. Whoop. But she's on the chat and she is also part of this team. So I was just yes. wanted to give her a quick shout out. So Most I think definitely. it's also who's on the call is Tom Hick. And <laughs> look familiar? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this this is really strange for me to see <laughs> because uh, <clears throat> the part of this story that's strange for me is that this video that you're uh, you took a screenshot or someone took a screenshot of uh, that's me giving this TED talk and I know you guys are going to mention this but there's a whole other story of just me volunteering to lead a, a project that resulted in a TED talk. And, and the only reason I did it is because I thought, oh, maybe somebody will be inspired to do something similar. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> so I attended the workshop. It was offered um, for folks in our county to attend. Like I said, or like Jennifer ex explained, our consortium was super supportive. Um, we had just come back from lunch and Jen throws up this video that your TED talk um, uh, in the first few minutes, you talk about bringing in computer science students to work in a special ed classroom to look at a basket full of assistive technology. And I'm going to be quite honest with you, I don't quite remember anything you said after that. Um, <laughs> because that was my moment of inspiration where I was like, yes, this is the solution. So the irony of this particular photo being taken at this exact time, um, because the rest of the time you'll see me on my phone scrolling for Barbara's email and you, I'm sitting with some folks there after your TED talk, Jennifer had us break up into groups to create something. And my group members were very polite and allowed me to bulldoze in and say, we're building a cash register. I need to know if this works because if it does, I wanna take this back to a teacher. Um, and then here on the next slide, again, the irony, Jennifer just kind of politely videotaped everyone's presentation um, and the audio is off and that's fine, but you can see my eyes getting really big and excited because I started explaining. Um, so if this works, I think I know a teacher and I'm going to see if they'll let me borrow his students, if we can make a lesson where they shark tank and create a cap. So this is me brainstorming, um, what kind of came to happen. Um, you see me crossing my fingers and hoping and praying that maybe we can recreate this scene and let high school students be the heroes. Um, so yeah, so from there, Ooh. I went <laughs> and the team was built. <laughs> so Zach and Jen, do you wanna talk about how I may or may not have roped you into this? <laughs> well, it was actually during the Make Makey workshop, like after she got done, like it might've even been in the middle, like. Katie's hands start moving like this is which is what she does when she's exciting <laughs> and it, it is just great to see and I was like wait what and she's like do you remember when you when I asked you about this this is it this is it this is what I got to do and I was like oh and the light bulb went on for me I'm like I'm the assistive person a technology person and like it didn't even dawn on me about the makey makey but I guess when your mind's preoccupied in other places with so much going on in schools today. And um, in that last picture showing our team, Bethany was the other one that was a part of that Makey Makey Literacy mm -hmm. Workshop. Um, she was. She is home on maternity leave, currently cuddling her sweet, sweet baby, um, who is four <laughs> weeks old, I believe, Bethany. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and we miss her terribly, but she is doing exactly what she needs to right now. So I really, my goal was I wanted them, the experts of Makey Makey to come in and then Zach, poor Zach, God bless you. Oh, it's great. So uh, Katie and I had connected previously, um, you know, on a, a uh, support ticket. I was having issues where uh, I was using Chromecast and some of my students found out they could hijack it and project whatever they wanted uh, uh, for the whole class to see. So I was trying to get help and see if there was a way to um, fix that. And it just so happened that the class she stopped by um, was one of my computer math classes and we were learning Scratch that day. So she looks at my computer screen. I had a Scratch code pulled up that I was messing around with and 
Um, I don't know if, I, I think this was even back before um, you had gotten that email from Barbara, but that planted the seed, I guess, to later pull all of this together, um, all those little pieces coming together. Yeah. It, so what I'm talking about, I know this computer math teacher, this poor and suspecting Zach is yep. waiting for it. So we all sit down in a room together and it's, it, it is a testament to professional collaboration because you had somebody with this idea and I was trying my best to articulate this vision I had with a, a computer math teacher who was willing to listen and see how this fit into his personal goals. Um, a special education teacher who after four years, I'm sure was eager for an answer, but willing to wait a few weeks longer to let students be the heroes here and participate. And then having Jennifer with us um, so that she could be um, a, a testament to what the power of making make it could be. And the four of us sat down and we set out our goals, what we wanted to see happen. You know, a calculator would be great, a cash register that um, provided change or um, totals for change was the ultimate goal. Um, and then kind of the side goals that we would like to see for each student. And I, I see that Colleen has added a link to our planning document in the chat there. Um, I have a copy for it as well if you wanted me to screen share it. But generally, we just went through the design process. Um, again, a testament to Bethany here. She, there, here we have it. Um, she felt very passionately about the design process with this invention literacy. And although we were using it in our lesson plan design, she really emphasized that we need to make it a very evident thing, that it shouldn't accidentally end up in our structure. So you can see we've labeled our steps according to how it fits into the design process. Um, and it really helped us that when we were in a time crunch and we wanted to kind of, well, maybe we don't do this or maybe we do that. No, we have to have, we have to start with empathy. We have to start with relationships and building trust. We have to provide that feedback loop, um, not just feedback, but the feedback loop. So um, we really collaborated to make sure all of our goals were met, um, that we were in fact using the design process in this, teaching the students the design process, but also reinforcing it in our own lesson structure as educators and making sure it was in the forefront of our mind while we were moving forward. Um, at, at what point did you actually start using that language design process and that there is a a step-by-step -step process to go through uh, your workshop, <laughs> the workshop I'm, I mean with, with the language. with the uh, with the students that you were working like Zach students at what point did you Zach did you say okay here's what we're doing and why we're doing it this way um I guess not day one, so the, and we'll get to this later, but the first day was just kind of an observation, giving them a chance to see the cafe um, at work and figure out where they were gonna fit in. But from that first day where we're kind of like, all right, here's this project, um, here are the tools we're gonna use. It was really right from the beginning, um, looking at the project through this framework. I mean, I think that was, to me, that was evident in looking at what the students turned in as their cash register projects, because I, I remember being totally amazed that it had like, you know, they bought a donut, they bought a coffee, and then they turn, if they paid with a five, here's the change you need. Like, to me, I was just like, oh my gosh, these kids thought of everything. That was super amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, we, it was intentional in how we described it. Um, in our timeline, it was intentional in how we presented it to students. Um, and we, it, it, it kept showing up as we'll discuss throughout the process. But Zach, this is his timeline. Bless his heart as a teacher, I walk in and I go, do you wanna do a project? I need lots of time. So I think Zach should explain to you how gracious he was. Well, and, and I will say that it ended up working out perfectly because so with the computer math curriculum, there's a certain amount of um, projects that were created by the county and uh, the group that I have, we were burning through them pretty quickly and I was starting to get to a point where I, I need to come up with something to fill this last two weeks in, the, in uh, this term and this kind of just fell into my lap. It was perfect. Um, so that, that first day uh, opened the cafe for the students. So that was the last day before winter break. And I guess I, I misspoke earlier. We really did focus on this design process from the beginning with 
empathizing. So um, day one was that empathizing stage. Uh, from there, we got into the, the rest of it. So that day two, um, they basically, uh, Katie and Jennifer and Bethany gave that presentation that they had in that workshop all over again to um, my students. And they've said, and they, they may have already said, they really wanted to give my kids that same experience that they had um, being able to learn all of that the same way. Um, yeah, can we show them? Can we, I want to show them what the cafe looked like, that next step in the slide, I think. Yeah. Or maybe, it, yeah. Oh, yeah, we can show each one. And uh, this is the cafe. This is where they're first watching how, the, how they have to try to use the regular ca calculator. Right. Right. And so uh, the way we did this is um, each of my, I have two classes. We split them into two groups. The first group uh, got some money of various denominations, went through and placed an order. And uh, in that middle picture, you can see they're sitting there observing the other half of their classmates making those orders. Um, mm -hmm. and, then, and then we switched. So everybody had a chance to both be a customer and also be an observer watching. And it um, looks like those two boys are chit-chatting and not paying attention, but what they're doing is they've already identified, because we didn't tell them what they were there for. We just mm. said, watch the math. We're gonna do a project that's gonna involve this cafe and these students, we want you to meet the students, but we're bringing you down as a math class. So it's no surprise, just watch the math. And those two young men figured out immediately they need a cash register and they need it to be able to tell them change. And the young man further down brought a sketch pad and was already ideating on that sheet of paper what he envisioned that he could, what he could provide. So wow. this group picked it up right away. Like they instantly figured it out what, you know, the big secret, if, you're, if that's what you're going to want to call it. But Lori, you have great insight into the cafe and those students' perspective. Yeah, when um, I know I Barbara was there that day in the cafe, um, and our students were a little bit hesitant about having their gen ed peers come in there. They thought they were coming in there to maybe, um, you know, kind of look what they're doing and not really try to help them. But and so our kids were a little bit anxious about it. Um, but I think after a while, they, they, see, they understood that they were there to help and that they were there to try to find us some, some solutions to what our problem was. Can you speak to how these two groups of students may or may have interacted previous to this project? They had no interaction previously to this project. Um, the students that I teach are fairly well self-contained during the day for all their academics. Um, they're working on a much lower um, uh, level than the high school students. So unless they were in lunch or rode the bus with these kids, they had very little access to these students during the day, which I think made my students a little bit anxious about that, um, mm. having kids come in watching them. And maybe uh, Zach can talk about that too. Well, one of the things that I'm sure we're going to uh, hear, but is, is the progression of how people begin to understand well, assumptions that we have about people and when we're, we work with them. So, so the gen ed and the special ed students, what, what, how they felt about each other beforehand and as they worked and as they finished. Uh, we've, as we go along, I'd love to hear uh, insights that were gained either by you or by the students on both sides. And we have several uh, slides later on that will show how that relationship built during Great. the course of just these couple of weeks. So here we have the next step. So just because of the way of the calendar schedule, these four students at 8 a.m. on Monday after a two week winter break, here we go, starting the cold <laughs> engine up. Um, I think, you know, I, I really became obsessed with the idea that I wanted to recreate the Makey Makey Invention Literacy Workshop for these students. I had such a beneficial opportunity from Jen and Bethany and it was so inspirational for me. I wanted to recreate some of that. So you can see, Tom, I pulled up your video again. I specifically um, highlighted the assistive technology and how students were the changing factor here. They were the agent of change. And it just set the challenge. Do you think you can do this? Do you think you can create a cash register? And although I had the prototype with me that I had made during the workshop, 
I did not share that with them. I did not want to inspire them in that way. I wanted to mentor them. I wanted to support them, but I did not want to inadvertently give them a blueprint because the beauty of this project is there is no blueprint. It is their imagination is their, is their limit here. And then Barbara gave a amazing real world scenario client experience. She gave her time to come in and talk to the math students and explain, these are my students. These are their abilities. These are the places where they need support. This is what we would love to see incorporated. And um, you can't quite see in this picture, but the students had out pencil and paper and took notes about what she was saying. And so a lot of these students, um, Zach, how many would you say are looking towards career readiness for right after high school? Um, at least 80% of them. So I think I have two in each class that are not um, at the tech center learning some sort of um, vocational skill like that. So the experience of having a client and listening to their needs and then catering, you know, what their skills they have to what she needs, that in itself was an unbelievable real world experience opportunity. And we created a rubric, we'll show it to you, but I can tell you that is not what the students referenced. The students were looking for their notes. They were constantly talking. We, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Jen or Zach, but what we always heard was, well, they said that they need pictures. Well, they said that they need to have um, large touch points. You know, like they kept going back to her conversation and not so much the rubric. But yeah, from there, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, so who, who developed this rubric? Katie. Uh, well, Zach and I, like, through, uh -huh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you can, I, will, I, I will own I, the color coding for sure. But this was, you know, Zach and I having conversations that led to it about what the goals were, you know, what did he need to see out of this and what, what were his expectations? Um, yeah, I, I'm a color coding freak and, and I'm going <laughs> to format it in such a way, but um, Zach very much had an a, opinion on what he needed to get out of his students because it was his class. I mean, this was two or three weeks of his life and his, his curriculum. Mm -hmm. So, it, oh. Oh, go back, sorry. I was just it's gonna say, to go back. If, you look, <laughs> if you look at the, the rubric, it's designed in a way, um, it, it's a little forgiving. So like you can see uh, if, if you're late on uh, a few things, for example, you can still get an A in that category. Um, Partially, I, I wanted to make it this way is because the computer math class, uh, this is way, way, um, a way higher bar than any of the other projects we do uh, in computer math. Most of them, it's here's some instructions. It's very black and white, yes or no, you did do what you were supposed to do or you didn't. Whereas this, it's all so up in the air, um, mm -hmm. very open-ended. Um, multiple class periods being dedicated to the same uh, end goal. Uh, so that all was very, very different from the, the work we typically do in that class. So um, it was designed with that in mind, but there's, there's lots of opportunities uh, with the way that this rubric was set up to, um, you know, get points, I guess. <laughs> we didn't want them to be penalized if they didn't have a moment of creativity but we also didn't want the process to get in the way of a good grade. You know, sometimes lightning doesn't strike and sometimes you just can't get that great idea and that's fine. We appreciate you working towards this goal and creating something. Um, but at the same time, if you did have a really innovative idea, there should be that A plus. I think you saw like the difference between a scale of a nine or a 10. Um, and, I, and I really liked that. So Hi, I'm going to give you guys credit for having the old school makey makeys. You've got like the green rocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so step three was the makey makey invention literacy. And it was a very mini workshop um, because <laughs> they did have Barbara come in and speak to the students and they showed the video. But um, we did do switches and we did do a few smaller parts of the mini workshop, which lasted about 30 to 40 minutes, Bethany did a fabulous job of taking that five hour workshop and chopping it down to fit in there and hit on the key pieces that the students would need in order to 
be able to start and have a fairly a good understanding of what was going on with Makey Makey's and with the uh, different kinds of conductive materials and different kind of projects and switches that they that we had brought in, which were samples from our many workshops that we've done over the past year. So that they, they got what they needed to and then they hooked everything up and they played um, a couple scratch games and then we're like, okay, you need to work in your groups now and start brainstorming a few ideas of what you want this to look like for when you come back, you have some ideas of what you're going to do. Can you it's tell going. us about the groups? Uh, Zach, was that, uh, did you say you, you and you are going to work together? Or did you just say you got to form into groups of four? Um, I did give them groups. I, I tried to, uh, I, I mean, I had no idea how they would have divvied themselves up, but I did try to uh, make it, I could remember back to when we had done Scratch, um, who, the, which students were more comfortable with it. Um, I wanted to try to make the groups somewhat balanced uh, mm -hmm. in that respect. Um, I also wanted to make sure that it wasn't one group of uh, four buddies who were just gonna goof off the whole time. Uh, so tried to limit some of that as well. Okay, so I just have to speak. That top left picture is one of my favorites, and I wish I had a better one to show you. Have you guys ever seen the movie Apollo 13? Yes. Okay, so you know in the movie where they've got to fix something on the ship because they got to get, and the, the team leader comes in and he dumps materials all over the table, and he's got his team of engineers, and he says, all right, folks, we got to figure out how to get a square peg in a round hole. <laughs> this is all you have. Go. I love that part of the movie. And that is what I wanted to do with this group of kids. I just wanted to give them all, all the supplies they thought they could need, that they thought they might need, and just support them and support their creativity and try to really prevent myself from projecting what I thought it could look like. Um, and I will say, team back me up, there are eight very strong and very different projects. Mm -hmm. And first periods had this like box or rectangular shape to it. Like a lot of them were building up on a box shape. And then the second class that came in, they were very much into a panel shape. They had lots of flat boards or um, slanted board. I, I just, I mean, yeah. And, and it took a while to get there, didn't it, Zach? Like it took a while for us to get, get it moving because there wasn't a blueprint. Right. So, um, as I said earlier, this was something that was so open-ended. There wasn't a step-by-step -step instruction sheet for this. So, um, a lot of them were feeling very overwhelmed at this point on this first build day. No idea of how to get started. Um, but as soon as somebody came up with an idea, some, found something that clicked, it was off to the races. And they really uh, um, just started being willing to see what works, put something together. Zach, I've, I've got a uh, question for you and maybe Jennifer as well. Um, in the workshop, there is what, you know, what we call the, the design challenge, the demo or die. Right. And <clears throat> um, there's a, a period for me as a facilitator, uh, which involves, you know, uh, allowing people to use this hour because in the workshop we only use one hour mm -hmm. to actually ideate you know build a prototype test it and then prepare a presentation and um, there's always a, a grouper or at least that is struggles uh, like i don't know what to do and you're they're they're watching the clock and 15 minutes goes by 30 minutes goes by and they're still struggling um so, so there's this part, I guess, Zach, that I'd like you to maybe share with the, uh, the people watching the video, watching live or going to watch the video, which is how, how did you, um, what classroom management skills did you use to um, manage this aspect of this is difficult, I don't know what we're doing, um, can we do something else, or they're just sitting there 
and it doesn't seem like there's movement, right? That there's this big unknown and it shows up in the workshop. I'm sure you've seen that, Jennifer. Yes. Yeah. And so what happens, Zach, um, I guess what I'm looking for is what can teachers expect uh, when they delve into this, this unknown area here? Um, I would say the, the best thing short of straight giving them answers is to just kind of remind what are the things that we're trying to do here? What are the things that we need? Um, and wait for them to latch onto something and think, okay, well, how can we address that issue? What are some things we can do to solve that problem? Um, get them working on that. And then they hit another roadblock. Okay, well, what's next? What are, what are, what's something else that we need uh, to get out of this design? How can we address that issue? So asking them lots of questions and, and kind of just refreshing them on, uh, well, you took a lot of notes. What, what are some of the things that you wrote down um, from earlier? Or what are some mm. of the things that they say they need, you know? Get them yeah. thinking back on that, um, focusing on one small piece at a time, and then figuring out later how to put all of that together. Um, yeah, and, I, and I will say a, another thing as far from a classroom management standpoint, I could not have done this without the other ITRTs in the room, having those extra bodies to work with different groups because um, even with all of that help I was constantly from one group to the next making sure that everybody was staying on task um, wasn't hitting those roadblocks and just staying stuck um, so that was that was a huge help as well but can I tell you that that what he just said about keeping everybody on task and making sure everyone was hands-on you right. know I work with lots of different projects with lots of different classrooms and, and most of those projects are very successful, but it's very rare to have 100% of students hands-on, on the task, dedicated to solving the problem, a, and a real excitement almost. Not everyone was on the same level of excitement. That would be absurd. But, I mean, we, it, it, there were moments where we just kind of kept stepping back going, look around. There are no cell phones out right now. There is nobody like just tuning out and asking to go to the water fountain or asking for, I mean, everybody was in. Um, yeah. And Katie, we, we're, we're saying, Bethany's reminding you in the chat that the power of the real audience really helped their motivation. The fact that they were designing yes. something real for real students to use and had a real purpose. And I think that Zach really also hit the nail on the head. He never told them what to do. Instead, yeah. you did what a great teacher does, and you asked, and you prodded, and you nudged them a little bit. And that struggle, I think, is really why they created such amazing things. If one of the things that we talked about, because there was some concern. He said, I have some stronger math students than others, and some will want to um, code, and some won't. And I said, yes, that's why they're going to be the ones who want to cut the cardboard, and they're going to be the mm -hmm. ones who want to you know, figure out the physical thing that they feel more comfortable constructing. Some will not want that and they'll want the other. So, you know, a differentiated opportunity to participate, you know, teachers, this is an excellent example of that guide on the side um, analogy that we talk about with um, student centered and student driven learning, you know, Zach and, and just kind of supporting as a mentor and, and letting their creativity be the, the shining light and us just helping that shine a bit brighter. Um, but meanwhile, Jen was working with this, the cafe students and getting them ready because that was an integral piece of the puzzle. Can we go back to the last slide for just a moment? I have just yeah. a little bit I'd like to say about that. I'm trying. <laughs> um, because oh, it's so hard to get I was kind of in and out on the project with working with the cafe students and with a couple other appointments that I had during those times. Um, I would come in and I, I needed to support these students in their project. And I really was like, I have no idea what you did last block. <laughs> so I just asked questions that you use for when you're doing a PBL. So mm -hmm. like, I would be like, okay, so I don't really know what's going on here. What did you do last time? How did that go for you? Um, what have you done so far today? So what's your goal for today? And we talked about what's your goal, like how far do you want to get? How are you going to do that? Like, what are your next steps? Like you've done this and now you're kind of paused here, but, but what's your next step that you're trying to take and just kind of guiding them along that process. 
of going through those steps and so that they can continue and not get discouraged and not be like, well, I just don't know what to do now. Mm -hmm. Just ask these questions and get them thinking about, well, what have you done? Where are you going? And where, where, how are you going to get there? Awesome. Jennifer, what I like about this process is that I haven't heard you once say, students kept on asking us, is this on the test? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Never did I ever hear anything about, is this going to be graded or is this a test or, you know, what are we, what are we going to have to know at the end? I never heard any of that when I was working with them. And I was really impressed about um, how you presented the prototype demo to students and then had them go and rework it because I think this step right here is the step a lot of teachers don't include the time for, right? Like they don't put the time to actually test the invention with people. Right. Um, and I think it's really important. And, um, and Jason Hubbard is adding the uh, design thinking question frame in the chat, which is the how might we, which uh, mm -hmm. I tried to do when I put that out there for, for, um, for people to sign up for the webinar. How might we create a cash register for these students like that will come up with all their needs? And you guys really did. You did focus on that question um, by putting all those out there. But when you presented this uh, prototype demo, did your kids, were they like, did they realize they had some huge flaws and were like, oh no, now we have to go work on it more? Or were they excited to go make all those changes? What happened during this stage? I, yeah, I, I want Laura to kind of speak to um, her experience because this was her first time kind of walking in and seeing the math students. She knew that this was happening, um, but Barbara was kind of leading it up to this point. Um, and I, I want to say that the feedback that's happening in these pictures um, and the feedback that was taking place, that was a very purposeful, purposeful part um, of the process. While they were working on those prototypes, um, students got really frustrated that they weren't done yet, quote unquote. Um, they didn't quite understand the feedback loop and that it doesn't need to be done. We talked about how we're not going to ask closed-ended questions like, did you like this? Did you like the color? Because those questions sound like you're done and they weren't done. They were asking questions like, what would you like to see more of? What could have been easier? So that, and we talked about that, that was very intentional and all of them were required to come up with at least one question on their own specific to their project that was a design process based feedback question. So that it wasn't flattery and it wasn't ta-da, I'm done. It was, what else can I do for you? Um, and you can, and, and we saw that. They, they, we didn't have to push them. They heard that feedback. Mm -hmm. They heard that lesson. And on this day, when Barbara, or Barbara and Laura came in with their students, um, absolutely did we see that. Laura, do you want to talk about that a bit? Yeah, this was, for me, this was the, one of the most awesome days that we had. When we brought our kids in, yes. we had, we went to two periods. Zach had done this with two classes. And we brought about four students in each day. And the kids walked around to each group. We kind of helped them question like, oh, look how this works. The Zach students showed us, us how that worked. Our kids tried it. And then what I really liked was that Zach's kids would say, what do you think, is there something we should change? Is there something else you need? And my students would actually speak up and say, if, the, if we had the picture of the money there, it would help. Or if we had, you know, if we had buttons to push. And so they looked at each one and they loved every one they saw, but they were able to say, I like the one over there that had, you know, the pictures of the donuts and this one had the money. Um, so I think it would help Zach's kids see that we could all kind of, they could put everything together and kind of brainstorm how we could take all the things that they liked and what they thought was easy to use and then come up with a prototype. But it was just, to me, it was so inspiring watching Zach's students actually engage with my students, asking them pointed questions about what they liked or what they would like to see, and they would write down their responses. It wasn't just that they were saying it to be nice. They were actually writing down their responses to do what my kids needed. And I appreciated that so much. I mean, it was, it was the most amazing day for me to see that, to see how they just interacted with each other.
Did your kids just feel so good that day seeing that they were really making things for them after that first day where they were kind of leery of having they the did students? one of my students when he was walking out said to me I want to take computer math next year you know wow. he, that's what he because he just saw that all these kids had built that and he kept saying how did they do that and he wants to take computer math did so, you did you do scratch on your end at all? Like, did you have them try the scratch? I saw that you they did makey makey, but did the, they did they play with scratch too? Jennifer had brought that in. Jennifer, did we did we just did we do makey make? Well, I know we did makey makey. Did we do scratch also? I can't remember. Um, what I did to help train the students and get them prepared for whatever the final product was. Because at that point, they were still in the middle of prototyping, and we had no idea what the final product was going to be. And I'm like, well, what are the things they need to know? They need to know how to start and stop a scratch program. Mm -hmm. And they need to be familiar with all the different types of various buttons and conductive material and switches and all of those. So they had a day, which was um, the last slide, yeah, that where they got to play with scratch and they did not like make anything, but you can see there, the one student is playing his, the drums and another student is playing a different game. Yeah, you have the switches, you have more than yeah. just drums, you have lots, yeah. Yeah, lots of different things going on here. And the kids loved it. They had so much oh, fun. The kids like, had a ball doing that. All this time playing. And I'm like, you don't realize that you are actually training to do something for temptations. And that's okay. They didn't need to know that. They had a great time and they mm -hmm. learned what they needed to learn so that when they did get the real scratch program, they knew what to do with it. Awesome. So to go back to your original question, because I did skirt it for a second. Okay. For our bells ringing. <laughs> it's lunchtime here. Yeah. Um, the feedback oh, happened yeah. instantly that they did not reject the feedback loop at all. Okay. So yeah, you were there, that's step oh, six. So once we, mm -hmm, so once they tested it, Zach, how quickly do you think they started working on the feedback? I mean, it was, they were working up until they met with the cafe students. And mm -hmm. as soon as they were done, they got right back to it and were, I, it, it, this, this was one of the coolest moments for me because uh, with, <laughs> with the dynamic that I have with the, the students in these class, they are very um, vocal with their feedback. Um, and, and, you know, they're, they're up until this point had been some negative feedback. Like, uh, I, I think, I don't want to know how many times I was told, well, we could just buy them a cash register off of Amazon. <laughs> but once this happened, it was like two completely different classes. Um, they were every, every time that, um, these two groups of students came together, it was amazing the shift and how invested they were. And, um, just that, you know, that this is something real that, that, um, hit them a lot more than I would have anticipated. And that was just really cool to see. I think that this, this the ebb and flow of, of, uh, the project I find fascinating so when you initially brought your students, the two groups of students met each other, building empathy there, there was a realization that there's a problem, but some of, like you're suggesting, some of the students are just like, let's just buy a solution. <laughs> and it got hard. They didn't want yeah. to, you know, it was hard and, and you know, it's okay for it to be hard, but it's okay to struggle, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and to see that there was an even deeper buy-in on the day we're uh, testing prototype, we're gonna share our prototypes that instead of frustration, there's, there's an even deeper uh, dedication to the project. That's what I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. and, and they did, they, um, it, I would say right before prototype, they were starting to get a bit grumpy. This is really hard, <laughs> I'm not done yet. I thought I would be farther along and they were, you know, we all go through that when we're designing that that's a part of the design process but the energy the adrenaline that pumped through them and you know Laura I heard you say it and I have to underline the statement they looked each other in the eye student mm -hmm. to student not student to teacher student right. to student looked them in the eye um, advocated for themselves you know I know adults who struggle to give positive and not so positive feedback and these students were able to say, I really like this,
but I would love if you could add that as well. And to feel like they were in a space where they could say that, that alone to me. Um, and they did. I mean, you, you'll see here in the next slide that once we, you know, they, they did their feedback and they did their redesigning. Um, I felt they spent like, that time I, right before presentations they were debugging. Sorry, Laura. Yeah. I just felt like for, for my students, they were on an equal playing field with those kids that day. They went in that room and they were all equals. It was not that, you know, Zach's kids were going to tell my kids what they were going to do. They were all equals. And I think my, my kids felt that the minute they walked in. And it just, it was just, just an awesome experience, I think, for both set, for both students, both sets of students. But, yeah. Um, so, ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> ta the, these, these are the eight projects that, and you know, again, as educators, how many times can we say that every group produced at, at this level? Everybody showed up and everybody did something and they worked hard until the very last minute. And I want you to talk about um, this. You, when we called you earlier, we talked about this ping pong ball and the way that it works. And, and then I'm gonna go back a slide just to, to try to show. And you have some where there are switches here where they had to press on something. And then you had the ping pong ball. And I remember that you talked about this the students all helping each other decide how to do this and, and the reasoning behind that. I want you all to talk about that. So real quick before, because I want Laura to explain <laughs> what their students' preferences were and why, but um, again, shout out to Bethany, um, <laughs> who's watching and, and, and with us in heart and spirit. Um, a student came up with the idea of using ping pong balls, because um, I did say, I did tell them that I had used brads in the <laughs> sample that I had made. Um, and they'd asked for ping pong balls because I said, I bet a Brad would be too small accessibility wise. Mm -hmm. um, and they were going to have a ground touch and then use their other hand. So it would be a two handed cash register. And Bethany is the one who came up with the idea of splitting that foil down the middle. Um, is it okay, Bethany, for us to say that you borrowed some of your husband's golf balls for, the, for driving practice um, and that that's what we've cut in half? Don't um, does tell he know him. that now? <laughs> Is it okay? And that <laughs> she was. <laughs> no, he's never watching the recording. <laughs> um, that she has borrowed some of his practice driving range ball, golf balls. Um, and, but she was the one who came up with the idea of making a switch out of it so that she didn't need the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, you need the ground. Well, yeah, but didn't need like the right. two hand. So didn't one hold side, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think if I don't know if people can. Tell. One side is earth, and one side is whatever the key is they've done, so that when the the students touch the ping pong ball, they're getting both. Uh, they're hitting. They're made, they're completing the circuit. And I, but I remember you also talking about. Um, I guess maybe it was Bethany too that, but the, you said the brads were too small, but I also remember you said they couldn't push hard. Like there, there was a student who couldn't push the switch for a certain reason and the, the, their, uh, their gr gross motor skills weren't as defined. So they were having to, uh, they want you, that was part of the design process, I thought. I thought I remember y'all talking about that. Laura, do you want to talk about your students and how, like what things you were pulling from the projects? Right. Well, um, Barbara and I teach two different classrooms. Um, the kids that I have, they, their fine motor skills are, are pretty well developed. Okay. Um, but Barbara's students, they're not. And so mm -hmm. Barbara's students did need something that they could actually hold on to and touch and push. And so that's where those golf balls or ping pong balls, whatever, I guess golf balls came in so handy for them because they were able then to, um, you know, to use, use the cash register. Whereas mm -hmm. my students were more on wanting to use what's on the Chromebook. They could mm -hmm. just use their fingers to point and do the things on the Chromebook. Wow. So cool. they really made it um, usable for all the students and the kids got to choose which one was Wait more comfortable for them. Are you saying that Zach's students have those sprites as clickable or they touch the ping pong balls? Yes. I never knew this. Yeah, yes. they can so, use it either way. Either so way. The, since the Chromebooks are touch screen, um, and, and we'll get, uh, I have the code pulled up and I'll show you in a minute. Yeah. But yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Super so cool. Your kids are amazing. Yeah. 
So we could actually have more than one line than at our coffee wow. shop. We could put the, um, you know, the one cash register at one location and we could use the other cash register at the other location and they can use them simultaneously. Here, Laura, can you show them? Is it possible to pause the screen share and- Oh yeah. Can you show them the cash register? Yeah. So the cash register looks like this. I'm pretty sure I still have it. So if somebody, um, all of our prices are very easy. They're just 50 cents or a dollar. So when um, students come up and they order, if they order food. Special snacks are one dollar. Snacks are 50 cents. So now okay. when they, so then they, when they total it, they can hit the total button. Where's our total you button? You hit the money. So, um, so you've hit so it's been totally as you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now if they give a $5 bill, they hit the $5 bill and then it tells them on the computer how much change they're going to get back. That's so cool. And then wow. we just reset it and it's to, what, ready for the next customer. I love the sound effects too because yeah. they give you an idea that something's happened and yeah. changed and like it's, not, it's kind of the thing we don't really think about. Yeah. That is really and, cool. And so that was the one thing with the money. When they first started doing the prototypes, the money wasn't on there. And so it was mm -hmm. still, even though we had the food that made it perfect, um, having the pictures of the money so the kids could look, oh, he gave me a $20 bill. Here, I just pushed my 20 and there's my change. Mm -hmm. um, Very so, cool. yeah. And yeah. the feedback of sound, you guys gave feed, one or two groups had used mm -hmm. sound or at least had it on for prototype. And... Laura, you guys kept talking about, we love the sound, we love yes. the sound, and yes. everyone had sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it just, it's, just, um, it's just amazing. It's just an amazing experience for our kids. Um, we are running low on time, you guys, and you guys have to teach, so I want to, I want to, how many more, I want to see how much we can get through here, but, so these are the kids trying out the final uh, mm -hmm. cash register. Yes. They were trying and trying to learn the cash register and they had no issues doing it. We threw yeah, out a awesome. lot of different combinations of orders with them and for change and they had no issues. They really so liked great. it and they really liked the, the noises and the verbal responses to their touches to know that it was actually doing what they wanted it to do. And we're, when this video is shared, by the way, for everyone, the resources and links to all of these will be uh, in that same post. Yes. And so Zach, do you want to talk about the scratch code? Do you want to talk about it this way or do you want to share your screen? Um, sure, I can share my screen. I have it pulled okay. up. Okay, let um, me stop my share. See. Oh no, hold on. Wait, I oh. lost the- uh, You lost it. Okay, it's okay. Let's just talk about it from. Uh, yeah. So. From this. Um, Sorry. Well, now there I can't, the issue is I can't see the uh, the screen. The um. Oh, you the can't. Presentation went away. I don't know I how to get that. Oh, you've lost it. Uh, that happened. There it is. There it is. Got it back. Got it back. <laughs> okay. So, um, as you can see, as it's flipping through on each sprite. Uh, there's two event keys. One is a when the sprite is clicked and the other is when a certain key is pressed. Um, under each of those events, the blocks are the same um, because we want them to do the same thing. It's just so you can either press on the screen since the Chromebooks are touch screen or you can uh, press the golf ball that's linked to the certain key bind. Um, I just think only, that's amazing. And the only difference you might notice on some of them is, <clears throat> excuse me, for the uh, key bind, we did add a weight block where they, they thought to add a weight block at the end. Because um, if, if you hold a key on your keyboard, you could you know tally up a total pretty quickly. Um, but yeah. That's awesome. We, can I reiterate that the students did that? Like that was their yeah. trial and error where they figured out they needed to do this. You know, again, there was no blueprint. I think they would have loved it if we just told them what code to use. <laughs> they would have. <laughs> It took a lot of trial and error, but the kids figured it out. And then? And then you right. got to use it. I want to, I, I think this is so awesome, but I really want to sh make sure we share the feedback from the kids because I feel like sometimes that feedback from the kids is the other step that we as teachers forget to do. But when you do get the feedback, like look at what these kids said about working on this project. 
Like they were felt so important after doing this and it's just so great to what you what you did with them all i will say that the bottom right one that has the darker bolder um border around it that is from one of the cafe students um mm -hmm. the same young man who expressed his anxiety about being like oh they're just here to tell us what we're doing yeah. wrong um Aww. you know he's the one at the end that was he took time out of his day to track down barbara to tell her this that mm. um I just think it's really cool that those kids took the time to work on those registers. You know, they spent a lot of time thinking about what we wanted and for him yeah, to get so that, sweet. that he was considered, um, that, that brought, that brought the happy tears. <laughs> yeah. And the, and this too, the, um, that we had really, we had fun, but it was really cool that in the end, all the cash registers were combined to make one amazing registers because each project had amazing components, but, Everything was missing a little bit of something, so we just put everyone's together. So awesome. Okay. <laughs> it's 12.02, and uh, we don't want you to, we don't want you to be late to your next class. So if there's, <laughs> I, there are actually, everybody's been great in the chat, just kind of speaking as they go. Um, Jason wanted to tell you how amazing you all were and that you're just doing great great work um i think you made all of us cry <laughs> and uh thanks so much he jason said thanks so much for your time and transparency and sharing resources it's really great what you do with your students and i don't know if you all know but jason was actually one of our past webinar presenters so that's why oh. we thought it was awesome that he was here uh and he did a project with uh project invent which is also a design thinking and um, accessibility and looking at actually creating something real for real users. So I think that's awesome. So if there's any questions, uh, now's your time, everybody. Uh, and Naomi is also telling you thank you for all your creative experience. This, this really has been awesome. And um, I think I, I, I do have a question once. So <laughs> the, this is, um, so one of the reasons Colleen and I are so excited about the work that you did is that we're hopeful that more uh, people around the country, around the world, will engage their students in real design work. Um, and yet, uh, I don't want to sugarcoat this uh, in that what you did is extraordinary, and I think it's extraordinary because it's hard. You, you, you um, came together as a team, and there's lots of barriers to prevent that. At least when I was in the classroom, it's just the, the normal job of being a teacher is hard, but then collaborating with others is, can make it even harder. So what are some, um, I mean, you've given us some reasons, some like, boy, there's amazing things will happen. Tell us about some roadblocks that likely people are going to encounter if they take on a project like this. I'll say that one thing that we had that was definitely to our benefit is um, Barbara's and I's plannings lined up. Not everybody will have that. So I guess finding the time to actually all meet together and have those discussions face to face um, would at least to me seem to be the biggest obstacle that uh, other teachers trying to do this might have. I think in the same way that the students collaborated and where some felt more comfortable coding, some felt more comfortable constructing on our professional team, some felt more comfortable with the scratch and the technology and some felt more comfortable with the project planning and we could lean on each other's strengths. I don't have to know the ins and outs of computer math to help you come up with the steps it will take to get from A to Z. Um, you know, we all specialized in something and we leaned into each other's specialties um, so that we didn't feel like we had to do it all by ourselves, and we had a team to work with when we didn't know how to go forward. And it's relationships, you know, knowing who we are, knowing that we could work well together, what we could bring to the table, that's vital in teamwork. And we had that trust and relationship already to some degrees more than others, um, but, it, it helped us be able to trust and to and say, all right, I'm going to take the leap of faith with you. Let's let's try this. And you told us that multiple times you guys would step back and look at each other and go, this is big. <laughs> like, 
this is like what's happening right now is really amazing and and it's really it feels good i know as a teacher when that happens i've done i would like to say at least two projects where i felt that feeling of like whoa this is big what we're doing right now is really big and it's really important so um we're really appreciative that you made those resources and kept them and and we're like, and yes, we're ready to share it when I emailed you. Yes, please, we wanna share all of this. We, we knew it, we knew it was big and we knew others would um, benefit from it. And it's so important um, what you're doing in your school and you didn't even have to share it with the world, but sharing it with the world is even cooler because now hopefully we'll see even more um, projects like this. So we're, we're just so appreciative of your time of your resources and everything you shared um, over the last month with Tom and I <laughs> and now uh, with the whole world. It's just really been amazing. This is like, to me, this is the top, one of the top webinars of 2020 and we're only just getting in. So I don't know how people are going to It'll be a great me. year. Thank you for <laughs> it's going to have to be. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for people, letting us. Of course. Well, there are already people wondering, I know Naomi, who gets around to a lot of conferences <laughs> And is an amazing trainer and and uh and so she was like I, i'm sure you saw in the chat here that this story needs to be told in more than just this venue so we're hoping that uh you can get around to share this uh, i'm glad that we can be a part of it but this this is just uh, uh, amazing and delightful and mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you how proud i am of the work that you and your students have done um, so, uh, and this, this is why I'm doing this work, right, is because we need more people who are out there feeling empowered uh, as creators, as people who can work together and solve problems, whether it's technological or social, it, it doesn't matter, but we need empowered people to say, oh, I see a problem. I have learned some skills to be able to uh, go out and make a difference and make the world a better place. Yeah, so, so awesome. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you for the opportunity to let us share our story. Um, you're right, we did. There were many times where we would have happy tears or we'd have this overwhelming like, this is great. This is students helping students. This is students doing everything. We want them to learn. When they leave our school system, we want them to be thinkers and creators and we want them to be able to do all these things. And um, we appreciate the platform that you've offered us today to let us all come together oh. and share it. Um, Cause we all have a different perspective. We all saw the story from our own lens while it was happening and hearing our collective story. We appreciate you letting us have as full of a team as we could today to tell you about it. Um, so thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, and I really wanna say, oh yes, present this at VISTI. That's a great idea if you haven't already to. considered it. Um, and I really think that to me, like the, one of the most important things that I heard today was how cherished and valued Laura and um, Jennifer's, is it Jen, not Jennifer, Laura Barbara. and Barbara's Barbara. kids. And Barbara. I was about to say Bethany, but I knew it wasn't Bethany. Yeah. Laura and Barbara's kids felt when you came in and did that feedback loop because you're asking them how they feel about it and how often do they get that mixture and that feeling right. so i just think that's really amazing like uh i i don't know i just love it i just love it you guys are awesome thanks so much thank, thank you. you thank you yeah well uh we're gonna end today yes we're sharing the recording we'll share all the resources and um you guys have a great rest of your day you too. thank you you too yes, thank you <laughs> All right. Thanks so Bye, much. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.